Okay, so this problem, it looks uh, difficult, but you'll see it won't turn out that bad. First of all, um, we're being raised to the one-third, or in other words, the cube root. And so here we have, uh, on the numerator, we have a power of one, and then the denominator, you look at it as four times one-third, or four divided by three. Um, so the highest power is four-thirds. So that's what we're going to divide uh, the numerator and the denominator by. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to have 4x minus 9. And then in the denominator, we're going to have 3x to the 4th minus 2 to the 1 -third. Okay, so divide by x to the 4 thirds. Four thirds, and then here we're going to divide by x to the four. And I'm going to write this one a little bit differently just to save myself a step. Instead of writing it as x to the four thirds, I'm going to write it as x to the fourth raised to the one third. And this is the same by the uh, laws of exponents. Okay, now. Um, here these simplify and I'm left with x to the one-third in the denominator. And now these, well these have the same exponent, so I can bring the x to the fourth inside without a problem this time. Okay, so here I have the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And notice that this time uh, the sign doesn't matter because uh, when you raise a negative number to the fourth power, it's always going to turn positive. So you don't have to worry about uh, what we had to worry about in the previous two problems. Okay, so we have 4 over x to the one-third on top, minus 9 over x to the fourth-thirds. And then we have uh, 3 x to the fourth over x to the fourth minus two over x to the fourth, and all this to the one third. So all I did, all I did was bring the x to the fourth inside. Okay, now these guys cancel, and so this guy's going to zero, this guy's going to zero, and this guy's going to zero. So that means that we have zero over. 3, which is the only thing that's left over, to the 1 -third. Well, this is just equal to 0. Okay, so uh, this involves a trig function, and limits involving trig functions generally are a little bit uh, trickier just because you have to uh, know a little bit about the function itself. Now here it says that x approaches pi over 2 from the right side. And we have e being raised to the tangent. Now we know that uh, tangent of pi over 2 is undefined, but that's because uh, there's a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. So if I draw a quick sketch of tangent This is pi over 2, negative pi over 2. So tangent looks something like this. And then it repeats itself to the next vertical asymptote and such. And so if we approach pi over 2 from the right, well, tangent is going down to negative infinity. So really what we're looking at is e being raised to a really, really, really big negative number. Now obviously this isn't technically correct because infinity isn't a number, so you can't really plug it in. But what you're imagining is a very big negative number, a very big negative exponent. Well, negative exponents, um, to make sense of them, we have to turn them positive. So this guy is the same as 1 over e to a very big number. And e raised to a very big number 
is simply a very, very, very big number. And so the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So this guy is going to uh, 0. And so the answer is 0. Okay, so this is the last problem in our handout. And it deals with an infinite limit again. And so what we have uh, the same type of a deal. We're going to divide by x to the highest power. So the highest power is, in this case, just x, because x cubed divided by 3 is x. So I'm just going to rewrite this. And I'm going to do this in one step, because we've done several of these already. So I'm just rewriting this again. OK, so I'm going to divide here by x on the numerator. Then the denominator, I want to bring it inside. So remember, you have to think of uh, what's going on. So you have to say that x is equal to the cube root of x cubed. Now, this is true, but you have to be careful with the sign here. So these guys, these x values, since x is going to negative infinity, these guys are negative. And here, well, if you have a negative number and you cube it, well, that's going to be negative. You get the cube root of it. It's also going to be negative. So this time, you don't need to put a negative sign in here because these guys match. And that's different from the other ones we've seen. So it's important to realize that in this case, you can just bring in the x cubed without a problem. Okay? All right, so now we simplify. So these simplify. Uh, this guy is going to go to 0. These guys simplify, and this guy is going to go to 0. Okay, so what we have here is uh, 1 over the cube root of 9. And that's it.